Hello, everyone. Welcome to another screening series Q&A. My name is Camelia Shofani, and I'm the Senior Manager of Public Programs and Events at the International Documentary Association. For our blind or low vision attendees, I'm going to identify myself. I have dark hair in a bun. I have light skin and brown eyes, and I'm wearing a black shirt. I want to thank our media sponsors, Variety and KCRW, for bringing us the screening series this year. Tonight, we'll be having a conversation between filmmaker Joanna Nata, or Nata Segarra, and director Violet Dufang, whose directorial debut, Hidden Letters, premiered at Tribeca Film Festival this year. For more information on our screening series, lineup, and Q&As, please visit documentary dot org forward slash screening dash series. Before we get started, I would like to offer a brief land acknowledgement. We recognize the Gabrielino Tongva as the past, present, and future caretakers of the land, water, and cultural resources in the unceded territory of Los Angeles. Thank you so much, Andrea, for delivering that intro. And with that, I give it to Joanna. Thank you, everyone. Good morning. My name is Joanna Nasagara, uh, and I'm a producer based here in London. Delighted to be moderating today's session with Violet Dufan, director and producer of the beautiful film Hidden Letters. Good morning, Violet. How are you? Good morning, Joanna. I'm Hello. good. How are you? I'm good. I've just remembered that we are in fact supposed to describe ourselves. So for our audiences, I am a middle-aged Asian woman in a beige jumper in a white room. I'm a middle-aged Asian woman in a black t-shirt with a blur background. <laughs> Great. Well, what a thrill to be talking to you today about your beautiful film. Um, and I think I'd just love to start by asking, how did you find this story or did it find you? Yeah, so I actually read a novel called Snowflower and a Secret Fan, written by uh, American author Lisa C. about 15 years ago. And it was a novel based on this secret language. And I remember reading this book and feeling completely blown away by the existence of the language, but at the same time feeling really ashamed that as an Asian woman, as a Chinese woman, I knew nothing about it growing up. So fast forwarding, um, I think um, to 2010, that was a year that I moved back to China and I got married and had my daughter. And instantly I started to feel the increased overwhelming pressure as a Chinese woman to deal with, you know, um, all these societal expectations um, uh, for me as a mother and also as a wife. And I had a sense of confusion also as a filmmaker, a female filmmaker dealing with uh, a very patriarchal film industry still in China. Um, so I was dying to find a space to talk about um, this gender role and this gender um, frustration that I had. Um, but at the time, I think in China, gender equality is not something that you can overly talk about. Um, so when my two producer approached me, um, Meta Chalmantikas from Norway and then Jean Chen from the US um, to make a film about Nu Shu. My instant reaction is that if I can tie the history of Nu Shu with what's going on of women's experiences in China, then that's a film that I want to make. Mm -hmm. And that's and how the journey began. That's lovely. How, how had Meta and Jean heard about the, about the language? It actually started all from Meta's mom, who's um, Chinese and also from Shanghai. And I think we probably read the same book around the same time. And since then, she has been bugging Meta to make a film about Yu Shu. So eventually Meta uh, went to Jean and then Jean connected us. That makes sense. That makes sense. I mean, you tell the story so beautifully, but it's not, um, I, I can see as a producer, it must have been difficult to know where to start. How did you approach the topic and how did you find your characters? Yeah, I know that, I mean, this film is actually really complex. There's a lot of layers. And then from during the time that I researched, I know a couple of things. Um, one is that I wanted to tell the story through you know, cinema variety really following the youngest generation of women who is trying to revive Nushu, but at the same time is navigating their own 
personal life and career life in the patriarchal society. And that's very much what I was struggling with. So finding a way to build that trust and, and intimate access with the character, I know is absolutely the most important thing. And to follow them at the crossroad at their life, and then to really um, be on the journey with them to see through their transformation uh, with their relationship to Nishu is absolutely important to me. And I also know that, you know, uh, with a film like this, it's really important to cast the backdrop of where the society is at. And, and to me is to find a way through the lens of Nishu to show the audience um, basically where the bigger landscape of gender um, perceptions are in China and and how does where does that come from? Um, I mean to me it's 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 very complex that we sit in a society um, that's affected by the great you know thousands of years of tradition and cultural and also the systematic um, structure of where we are that's still very patriarchal and also coming from men's perception about women and how women see ourselves. So like all these layers, I need to find a way to bring all those together. So that's why that, you know, um, the first time I went to the villages to scout about um, the story of Nishu, I instantly realized the importance of how the commercialization of the, the language will play in a role in the film and why that needs to be. So anyway, so I think that it's it's having all these layers coming together is probably the most, um, most um, difficult challenge uh, throughout the making. Yeah, I mean, you, you you thread it beautifully, and I think the word complex is is very real. You know, the film, in many ways, I think, plays like a narrative film, and your use of verite is a real kind of testament to that. Obviously, there's there's a part of that because you got very close to the characters, and your access is is wonderful. How did you build those relationships of trust with the three women in the film? Well, because I. From the very beginning, I was very transparent with them why I'm making this film. And they understand that, you know, it is a film about Yushu, but it's actually a film about them because I'm very much one of them. And I also really was hoping to make this film and then also try to find answers for myself as a filmmaker and also as a mother, as a woman and all of those things. And so like, we're very much in this together and the transparency of the motivation of me making a film plays a huge role of um, why the characters really trusted um, our relationship. Um, yeah, and I think that's, um, I also knew from the beginning that I really wanted to cast one girl from the rural areas and one girl from the city because the challenges of women um, that they're facing from these two different parts of, of, of the country is very different. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, so when I met Hu Xin and I understood that she's at this traumatic um, you know, point where she just got divorced, I, you know, that was that was the moment that I knew that I want to um, start to follow her because you know from then on I know she will have a different kind of relationship with Nishu and mm -hmm. that's whatever that means um, that's something that I'm really interested to capture and then be on the journey with her and mm -hmm. through her I, I met Simu who actually learned Nishu from her in the city and you know to me that she first of all is in the relationship and secondly she's probably one of the only person that I've met um, among my casting that who is in Nishu out of pure passion um, for the secret language and also out of the pure um, intention that she really was trying to hope to have the dialogue with, with the secret language so that she can find her own gender identity. And to me, that's like so important. Um, and also she um, is in this amazing uh, group of um, like 20 something female artists um, that they have this annual exhibitions to use art to, to talk about their gender roles and their gender challenges. So all of this made me, um, yeah, instantly after the first conversation, we were just like, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I will say men don't come off well in this film. Do you think that's, uh, you know, it, it was a surprise to me. I mean you know, in many ways, the film is very much about China, but there are also also so many things that are universal and felt, you know, very recognizable to me, you know, in, in, in British society, the level of patriarchy, the pressure, the additional pressure of kind of working women and motherhood is all is all very, very universal. 
but tell me does this feel do you think representative of you know most male female relationships in China or I think that's how I I think that's how I felt when I was living there for the seven years and I was also shocked myself of like how we're still living in this kind of like confinement in a lot of ways and I said that you know those scenes that when we see men's reactions to new shoe and more importantly to women that you know it's very natural settings that we just simply had the camera there um yeah um I think that I mean I I honestly um we actually try to neutralize you know especially through Simu's fiance's character a bit, um, especially, you know, like having the scenes about, you know, at, at you know, the lunch scene when he took Simu back to his hometown and had the lunch with his family and then talking about the role of him as a boy, mm-hmm. that his responsibility to take care of the family. I mean, there's those things that we intentionally really wanted to have it in a film so that people have a sense that, you know, men are also confined in their role and their, you know, societal expectations on them also. So it's it's not like, you know, men's fault or <laughs> women's fault in this regard, but like we're all trapped in our, you know, uh, roles in, in these kind of settings. So I think that's more important for us to to kind of show. And, and also I think that China is a society where, um, you know, Interestingly, when I've been, you know, showing this film in many festivals and a lot of audience came to me and said that, you know, wow, you know, we had the impression that Chinese woman is actually really, you know, like um, sophisticated and also well-educated and then really accomplished in a lot of sense. And I'm like, yeah, that's right. And we have done tremendous work, um, you know, on our being and all of that. But, you know, the problem is that I think men's expectations hasn't changed that much. So that created a huge gap between these two genders. And then how do we how do we help with that? Um, mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm really hoping that this film can, can help both men and women to reflect on our roles and finding a way to, to bridge that gap. Yeah, I mean, there are multiple axes in this film, aren't there? There's the gender axis, but there's also modernity and, you know, history. There's, you know, commercialization and community. Tell me, how did you navigate telling all of that successfully in one film? Um, By digging deep into the characters emotionally. And I truly believe that the deeper that we can get into the character, the deeper we can get into a personal story and all these complexities will just come out by itself and the people can interpret different ways. And then that's, I think my approach. And then also, I don't think that I have answers to all these questions, but only by being authentically, honestly with my characters throughout their emotional journey is my way to help people to connect to them in a way that, and all these questions and all these reflections will be you know, coming out in different kind of ways um, Mm -hmm. from the audience. I mean, your own, your own approach to the film is incredibly artistic. You're clearly a very cinematic filmmaker. Um, Did, was that very intentional or is it just instinctive? I never really saw myself as a very, (laughs) I came from a journalism background. So to me, to have a way to communicate with the audience in a true authentic way is the most important thing to me but I think the kind of style of this film you know kind of come on naturally by itself because of what usual is you know it's poetry it's Mm -hmm. it has to be lyrical in certain sense and you know there's so many unspeakable uh kind of natures of why this language exists and then how does this woman communicate and Mm -hmm. I think that uh, using this artistic approach and cinematic approach or whatever you call it uh, is only fitting in this film and I, I think that you know like the film itself has to flow like like a poetry you know um, and which is kind of like why I think shows true respect um, to the legacy of what these women created. Mm-hmm. Yeah I certainly think you achieved that. Have you have you shown it to the, to the three women? And what did they well, think of? So we are um yes, um I have 
had very in-depth communications with these women about, you know, what got into the film and what I decided not to, um, not to be edited into the film. And then the choices of what I made and then why I made those has been communicated very clearly with my characters. Um, and I think that's super important because that, you know, they have been in this journey with me um, and trust, trust, you know, us with um, all they have basically. And then the consequence, especially to have subjects in documentaries and to be seen in China eventually is something that we had to be super, super careful about. Um, so I think that that kind of conversation that I had with the characters is, is really important. And I think that they also really trust the, uh, the outcome of how this film plays out. Mm -hmm. And so will you be showing the film in China? We're working on it. <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I will say that there's a huge story beat about commercialization, and obviously it's a fascinating one, you know, specifically around around Nushu, but it it seems to speak to a broader a broader kind of context of Chinese society right now. Again, talk to me about that. Was that intentional, or did it just flow from what you saw in the lens? Yeah, it's absolutely intentional. I think there are so many layers about why I think that the importance of these scenes to be in the film. I mean, first of all, my feeling of when I moved back to China of how the society changes from the time that when I was born and raised in China, very much in a time that's more communist. And then there's one thing that the Communist Party really promoted was gender equality. And my mom was the first generation medical staff in the family and just like Simu's mom. So I instantly, as soon as I met Simu's mom, I knew that where she come from. And you know, like that generation of women to tremendous pride in their profession. And back then, I think in China, the participation rate of women in politics and labor were the highest among the world. Yeah. And then fast forward to where when my I became a mother and you know like one of the most significant change was that all the state provided free childcare service was taken away so like and then the gender income gap becomes like so big um, that because of that a lot of women has to be forced in a row back into the family and I just felt like you know how capitalism really plays a significant role in changing gender equality and that's not just China that's everywhere and now that you know like everything is commercialized and now that the last product that women created um intentionally trying to carve out a space for themselves is being commercialized too there's so much irony in this and then there's so much parallel about how you should be capitalized and how the society being capitalized and how women are trapped in these roles um, mm -hmm. because of that so i think there's one layer of that that I'm really hoping that through these scenes that will help people to provoke their thoughts uh, around those lines. And the other thing is that I really was hoping to use these scenes to to really show men's reaction towards Nushu and more importantly towards women. Mm -hmm. And the only difference is that we have a camera there. Um, you know, we weren't trying to um, you know enforce these men's behavior to be like this, but you know they feel very comfortable, uh, like how. They behave and then trying to co-opt and then taking over what what woman has created for themselves so i think that those are those are things along the line that why i think is really important to build a storyline about the commercialization of new show and how um my my characters are stuck in these roles as well what do you recognize i mean i know i know you now live in the us and you know women's rights are not you know not not a hot topic in the us what do you recognize where you're living now and what are the differences from China? I think that, you know, like it's global. It's global, it's not just US, it's what's happening in Iran right now. It's in China, it's in Ukraine, it's in Afghanistan. That, you know, however much we have changed, it seems like, you know, we're in certain ways are still at the same place. And mm -hmm. if we don't come together, um, I think that keep pushing the narrative forward and it's just very easy that things can go backwards. And that's what China is, um, I think, as 
you know, certain ways. It's it's like that, and also what's happening in the U.S. It's also like that. Yeah, I think I think that that's what actually really inspired me of what these women created in Yushu. That, you know, I often think that way. You know, during the feudal society, that they're in this like unbearable condition at the bottom of the society and there's no way for them to even imagine to change any bit of what the system is like or what the dominant st social structure is like mm -hmm. but instead they find their own way by coming together by creating the space to share their vulnerabilities to share their authentic beings and to also um share their resilience and find strength and power by coming together. And that's like extraordinary. And in the end, I have to mention that in the end, over the years, you know, um, that men even show more respect to women because they understand the existence of this language. So any woman who knew how to practice Nushu were being called gentle woman as a term in these villages and even by men. So I thought that's like so incredible and how that has a relevance um, today, even that the importance of that legacy to be carried on of how we should just, you know, like we should just all come together and, um, you know, share our vulnerabilities and build our strengths and um, by speaking up together. Yeah. I mean, on that note, I'd love to know, you know, to ask you about the impact campaign for this film, because, you know, I've always been really attracted and impressed by the impact work that you do. Um, do you have plans for this? And if so, what are they? Yeah, so we, I have been so passionate about this film because I know that it's, you know, you should just an entry point to look at into, you know, where we are as Chinese women, but also where we are as women in general. And it's not just a woman about Chinese women. It's, it's not a film about just about Chinese women. It's a film about, you know, all of us. So I'm really hoping by by you know honor, honoring the legacy of new Shu, we can really um elevate um all women who are trying to use different kind of art to share their experiences to express themselves in a daring way um that they otherwise could not so we have started this um uh, 10 episode Instagram live series and um, and it happens every month um, just follow us on Instagram and every episode we feature one female artist um, who is using their different kind of art forms to express their true beings and to express their challenges um, in different kind of ways of their gender um, identities um, and along with the Instagram live series we have also just opened our call um, for all women to submit to us of their artwork uh, that share their, um, you know, um, identity and share their women's experiences. And it's on our website um, at uh, hiddenlettersfilm.com. And on that, there's a tab called Engage. And under that, it's there's a tab called um, Virtual Gallery. So it takes probably only 10 minutes to submit to us. But like any woman from any kind of cultural or socioeconomic background, um, can can submit to us and at the end of the process we're going to have cash winners um, and also we'll have a selection of, of women's work and then build it into our virtual gallery and um, that will be like April next year and I think for any audience they can just use their phone and then go into our virtual gallery and it will be like an AI kind of design and it's like how you walk into a museum is how you will be walking into our virtual gallery and then on the walls you will see these women's uh, works and then also hear the stories of how they share their experiences and we're really hoping to have this virtual gallery to travel around the world um, and in that way to create our own space of, of sisterhood and by speaking it up together expressing ourselves together and um, yeah and then hopefully uh, through that we're also going to create our own power and strengths and helping to move forward the narrative. Well, Violet, you certainly showed us your, you know, your true self with this film. Thank you so much. I think audiences will agree. It's a stunning film. I also know it's a move from producing to directing, you know, for you. So really congratulations and can't wait to see what's next. Thank you so much.